welcome back to my channel. I am Leticia, the Crafty Curator, and I'm here for another floss tube update. Um, it is late November 2018. Um, today is the 26th of November. Um, and I just want to start out with a few shout outs and thank yous. Um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for um, the love they've shown, welcoming me back to Floss Tube. Also for um, the love shown to my peacocks and posies along the way. I do have a finish to show you later in the video, kind of. Um, <laughs> and also all the love that I received for um, the Twisted Band Sampler, which of course I finished back in June. Um... I finished back in June and just now got around to showing it because that's how I choose to live my life, apparently. Um, so first of all, some shout outs. I have some notes in front of me because I have a lot. I have a lot I want to cover today. Um, so I have to keep myself on track because the rabbit trails. So a few shout outs. I have a couple of floss tubers that I've been watching um, recently that are new to me. Not new to the scene, but new to me that I've really been enjoying. Um, so the first one is Heidi at Stitching 1 over 2. She is from um, Canada. I believe Caroline knows her very well. And she shows some beautiful um, projects and just a true pleasure to watch. I just enjoyed watching her and she was keeping me company getting while well, I was getting a lot of stitching done over the last um, week or so. Also, Addicted Stitchers. Um, see, now I'm messing up the name. Addicted Sisters? Addicted Sisters. That's funny because they mess up the name sometimes. They call themselves the Addicted Stitchers, but their name is Addicted Sisters, Nancy and Laura. Um, and I'm going to put everybody's information below that I mentioned um, in this recording. Um, but they are a couple of sisters. I believe they're out in the Midwest and they are both stitchers and they it, they're just so much fun to watch i laugh along with them and i just really enjoy them um so i invite you to go and check them both out and um i've been <laughs> binge watching catching up on two people that i've been with since day one um but since i stopped watching floss tube for a while not for any particular reason just life um i missed out on some of their videos so i had to go back to where i stopped and catch up and that is Dina at Half, Half Stitch Cross Stitch. I've always loved Dina from her very first video. Everybody knows Dina. Um, but I've been binge watching her. And Tosh, um, the Star Cross Stitcher. I, you know, there's only a couple of people where I can honestly say, I think I want to stitch every single thing they show. And the first two people that usually come to mind are Caroline, of course. She had me at hello. And Tosh. Tosh has the most eclectic taste. And I absolutely love everything she does. And then she showed her whip parade. That, that was a very dangerous episode for me to watch. I didn't buy anything, but I wanted absolutely everything. And unfortunately, one of the pieces she's been working on, I can't remember the name of it, but I've been eyeballing it since she started it. Um, it looks like a tapestry, like a, a just a hodgepodge of geometric shapes and colors. I can't remember the name of it, but I can see it clearly in my mind's eye. And if you watch her, you know which one I'm talking about, hopefully. Um, it's out of print now. So now I can't get it. Um, or I can, but I'm going to pay for it. So I'm not going to get it, but so I'll just watch her do it and she'll just have to stitch it for both of us. Um, also a huge shout out to Ginger Gerald Stitcher, our ginger haired friend. Um, since his last video with having me, not his last video, he's definitely done one since then because Caroline was on the last one. But on the confessions video um, that he did with me, I have gotten a lot of new people come my way and they said in the comments um, that they found my, cha my channel because of um, that episode. So thank you, Gerald, um, for sending some more love my way. Um, I never did Q&A ever. I don't know why, but 
I have a lot of questions and by a lot, I mean like five. <laughs> it was a lot for me. I don't know. Um, but I have some questions from my last couple of videos that I just wanted to, um, talk about. So stitchy girl in SR four asked me, um, she was one of the people actually that came my way through Gerald. So thanks again. She asked me if I use roll of frame, roll of frames. Um, and if so, do I use a table stand for them or use at a retreat? Also, what is Wexford linen? Um, so I talked about the Wexford linen that I'm doing my, um, tribal cat on with the de Havilland embroidery threads. And for the most part to me, it just looks like a 32 count even weave. Um, but I am going to share Ingeborg's comment who really broke it down. Um, so I'm going to answer the question about the Wexford linen in a second. Um, she asked me, do I use roll of frames? I do. Um, and if so, do you use a table stand for them? The funny thing about roll of frames, they are, and this is coming from somebody that uses Millennium and Quantum frames also, and Q-snaps and hoops. I use all the things. Nothing to me is as light in hand as a roll of frame. I mean, it is so lightweight, it's shocking. Um, I use the roller frame. I'm using the roller frame on um, the Jacobian bell pole. It's very lightweight. So a lot of times I'll just hold it in hand. But I also use the Needlework for, um, oh, what's it called? Needle system, Needlework system for lap stand. I don't know what I have, obviously. Needlework 4 system, Needlework system 4. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'll put it in there somewhere because I'm obviously struggling, right? Um, but I do use that for my roll of frames and it works absolutely beautifully. Um, I have taken that to re to one retreat in the past. Um, the Harrisburg, no, Stitch Fest. And it worked great with my um, Q-snaps at the time, but I like using it even better with roll of frames. Um, it's not as bulky because there's not as much frame involved. Um, speaking of retreats, New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat Part 2 is coming in August and I will be there. So if any of you are going to be there, let me know in the, um, comments so we can look for one another and I'll definitely be bringing it to that retreat. Um, hopefully along with the roller frames. The only thing is the Needlework System 4 that I use doesn't stretch wide enough um, to hold the wider roller frames. Um, so in that case, I use Lowry's. It works perfectly with a Lowry. Um, or if you have the type of stand where you just set it on top, it'll work for that too. But it's very lightweight. Um, so a lot of times I might just stitch in hand, not stitch in hand, but hold it. Um, Linda Saravino, I'm sorry if I butchered that. She said there was a whip that you show at the beginning of the video entitled Mr. Bean. I may have missed it, but did you show a pattern for that? So a couple of videos back I showed, um, on the turquoise fabric with the, um, Fiesta watercolors. That was Long Dog Sampler's Quaker Dozen, Quaker's Dozen. And I was referring to the Mr. Bean Needle Minder. Now, I don't know what I said in that video. I quite possibly could have messed my words up and referred to it as Mr. Bean. But I think I was introducing the Mr. Bean Needle Minder. So I just didn't want anybody else to be confused about the name of that pattern. But that most certainly was a Mr. Bean Needle Minder um, that I believe came from Mad for Minders. It was gifted to me. Um, but I, I believe it came from Mad for Minders and the actual pattern I was working on was a long dog samplers Quaker's dozen. Jason Wheat 2 asked, do you wash the dark color flosses on those dimension kits? I bought one, not a dimension kit, and they say to wash the reds and other dark colors. So this was a couple of videos back where I was showing the tulips, um, dimensions kit, and I have never washed my dark colors in any kit um, prior to using them. Um, and I didn't see anywhere in that particular kit where it instructed me to do so, but it's not a bad idea because a lot of times those richer colors do bleed, but it does say that they're color fast. So 
yeah, I don't. I never have in a kit. Um, or ever for that matter. If there is a color that I'm using that's not color fast, I just don't wash it. Um, but that's an interesting point. I just wanted to bring that up. So a stitch too far, our beloved Ingeborg, um, she gave an excellent explanation about the Wexford linen and also just a nice breakdown of the differences in various fabrics. And I just wanted to share with you what she shared with me because I thought it was, it was good information. So as far as I know, linen fabric that is used for stitching is a form of even weave. And so is Ada, by the way. Absolutely agree with that. The fabric we usually call even weave is a cotton fabric blend and is not slubby because apparently spun cotton fibers are more smooth than spun linen. So the cotton even weaves often have cotton blends. For example, Joblin is 51% cotton and 49% modal fiber, while Lugana fabric is 52% cotton and 48% viscose fiber. That is what makes them so supple. The linen even weave fabrics are usually 100% linen fiber, which makes them slubby and usually a bit more stiff than cotton blend fabrics. There are linen blends as well, like Floba, which is a blend of viscose and linen. They are all even weaves because they all have the same amount of thread per inch, both horizontally and vertically. And I absolutely agree with that. Um, it is what we refer to. I think all linens are even weaves as well as um, um, Ada. Ada is an even weave. Well, maybe not linen. Do we call linen an even weave? I don't think linen is even at all. Um, but I know Ada, by definition, would be an even weave. But I think, too, with that Wexford linen, um, the reason why they refer to it as linen might be based on the fiber content. I'm really not sure. Um, but that's great information to have. It's great information to have. Um, so thank you for the Q&A, guys. Um, I'm going to go on to the next section, but I'm going to pause right here for a moment. Sorry about that. My husband just popped in. He just got home and he reminded me that I have yet um, some more shout outs to do. I was actually watching um, the Sunshine Stitchers and I had them on pause. And he said, they're multiplying. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you used to just watch one person on pause tube. Then it went to two people. So he was probably talking about like Pam and stuff or the country stitchers. Um, which he watched with me at length when I was binge watching um, a few weeks back. He was just sitting there watching them with me on the sofa. But now I'm watching the Sunshine Stitchers and there are three of them. So he's like, first it was one, then it was two. Now it's three. They're multiplying on your screen. Muggles. So anyway, I thought that was funny. So yeah, huge shout out to the Sunshine Stitchers too. I absolutely love them. EJ, Gary, and Shalia. Um, they... Um, are all from the Sunshine State. That's their name, the Sunshine Stitchers. And they get together, I think, once a week or so, I think, um, and present their finishes in their haul. And it's just, just fun to watch. I really enjoy them. Um, I've also watched the Primitive Stitcher recently. She has a fantastic um, project bag tutorial that I know Tosh has used that I know I believe I don't know but I believe Ingeborg has used to make project bags and from what I understand they were both novice stitchers um, novice sewers as well um, so if you are a beginner with sewing with with a sewing machine um, I really appreciate how she walks through the steps and talks to you as if you have never um, been introduced to a sewing machine before. And she, you know, sometimes states the obvious, which to a sewer might be obvious, to an experienced sewer might be obvious, but to a novice sewer, maybe not so much. So I really, really appreciated um, that video. And I took notes and um, points within the video where she starts to actually sew, where she starts to actually talk about the zipper, putting the zipper, the zipper in. Um, 
So that is going to be my tutorial of choice because I've seen Ingeborg's bags in person and they're very well done. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited and we'll see what happens. I haven't started with that yet, um, but I do have fabric. I showed one set of fabric in my last video, I believe, and since then it's multiplied. So I'll show that in a moment. The last thing, um, last shout out I wanted to give was to Jessie Marie. Um, in her, not her last video, not her Lola Jan Hicks video, wink, wink, um, not that one, but in the Bead With Me video prior to that, I think I mentioned that in my last video as well. Um, she mentions a great um, bead conversion chart that is on Northern Needlework Expressions website on their blog, um, where it gives conversions for Mill Hills into Delica, Mayuki, and Toho, I believe. I used Mayuki on um, my Peacocks and Posies, not for any particular reason other than the color. I just really like the color um, with the color palette that I chose for the project. Um, but she also gave a great explanation, Jesse. I mean, about the differences between Mill Hill and Delica's. Um, because sometimes when I use Mill Hill specifically in my experience with Mirabilia's, sometimes you can get the needle through, sometimes you can't. The beads tend to be a little bit uneven. And she explained that Delica's are a lot more even. And I've heard that before. Um, so I really appreciated her giving that tip to go to um, the website to the Northern, Express Northern Expressions blog to get that chart and I will link that information below because I think that was very helpful um, particularly if you have a pattern that calls for Mill Hill like Mirabilia's um, or any pattern that calls for Mill Hill and you decide you prefer Delicos or you prefer Toho or Mayuki whatever the case may be it's really good information to have um, on hand Plus, she goes through her beading technique, and I apologize if I'm repeating myself. I know I mentioned her before when I was talking about how I was how, how I beaded. I was trying to use her technique, um, but it was a little too bunchy for that particular size um, bead and that count of fabric. It was too cumbersome, but I have used it on what I'm going to show you later in this video, and it was perfect. Um, I don't think my beads ever laid so straight. So great video, great tutorial. Thank you, Jesse. Um, I think that's all I have as far as notes and shout outs. Um, so now I'm going to go, go into my haul section and I'm going into haul first for a reason. So this is what I've picked up since I have since we last spoke. Um, this I have been after every time she posted the news posted the new set, Nancy Turner. Every time I went to grab a set because I absolutely love Grays, I missed out on it. I missed out on it. Um, and I would email her and I asked her, Do you have any left? Do you have any left? And it was, I guess, I guess she felt sorry for me because <laughs> She actually reached out to me when she was about to post um, the next set. She re-dyed both Bewitching Hour and Bewitching Spells, I believe. She re-dyed them both and let me know that she had them both available if I was still interested. And I was. So I got Bewitching Hour. There's a glare and you can see the Sunshine Stitchers right there. Or is that me? That's actually me, I think. Uh, whatever. So, <laughs> oh, jeez. So this is Bewitching Hour. You've probably seen it a million times, so I'm not going to open it. But I, there's a nice set of 20-yard skeins in there, I believe. And they're all delicious shades of gray. Not exactly 50, but there's quite a bit of them in there. It's a little bump bump joke. Um, so we just talked about project bags, right? Right. And I said that my fabric stash has changed. Well, I went on Etsy and I specifically looked for fat hacks. 
of project bags. And I think for mm, fabric, fat quarters, oh my gosh. Okay, that has a fabric specifically for project bags. That's what I looked for. Um, quilting cotton is the, the type of fabric that I felt comfortable using. Um, so I don't remember the name of the Etsy shop that I got these from off the top of my head, but I will link it below. Um, and I got some fabrics that looked like they blended well together. I was thinking the accent fabric and I was thinking the interior lining. I wasn't mm -mm, the main fabric. I was thinking about the main fabric front and back. And then I was thinking about the interior lining. What I did not take into account was the accent fabric. But the good news is I already have several um, fat quarters of that batik fabric, like the one that I used for the back of the peacocks and posies. Um, I have several. I got that in a bundle from eBay. So I am almost positive I'll be able to find an accent fabric that will complement these fabrics that I received. So I'll show you how they were intended to be stitched together as both lining and main fabric, but I think that may change um, because I want to say it was Elena B who made such a good point about just getting like the, the some clearance cotton from um, Joann's for the interior lining because nobody's going to see that. Um, and that makes so much sense. So um, I think I'm going to use these prettier fabrics for the outside and the accents. And that means I can just have more bags. Yeah. I, I still haven't made one. Fun fact. Um, I have all these plants and I have not made a single bag yet, but I have plans for them. So these are the first two. Um, that's showing up pretty well. I think it's like a butterfly and there's some gold in there. And this one is just a complimentary turquoise with like a little gold fleck in there as well. I don't think the gold part is showing up, but it's a little, little shimmer shimmer. So you'll be seeing these again. And I'm excited about these and you know, having these because I was afraid to use um, my gorgeous peacock fabric is my, is my first project bag in case, you know, I mess it up. <laughs> I was really afraid to do that, but I have a whole yard of that. I have a whole yard of that and I have a whole yard of, um, the complimentary fabric that I chose for that. So there's room for error, but it'd be really nice if it was more room for two bags rather than room for error. So we'll see what happens. But that was the first set. And then I got, I got this fabric. It's just stars because it was intended to go with something that she was out of. But I mean, it's fun. It's colorful. You know, it's a good price. We like stars. Why not? So that's the next one. But there was a complimentary fabric um, that she was out of, so I didn't get that. This is almost my favorite, um, and I'll save the best for last. But it's ladybugs. And I got this as the complimentary fabric because it has little ladybugs on the, on the, it's not the border. I'll open it up for you so you can see more. So that's the whole fabric. So the ladybugs are kind of like an afterthought in this fabric while the flowers are the prominent pattern. Um, dominant, should I say, pattern. Um, then I got this to go with it. Freaking love the little ladybugs. Freaking love them. This last one, I've actually seen this in a project bag um, that was made. I don't remember who made it, but I remember I wanted to buy it um, and it was sold out. And 
I think it was Tracy that found the actual fabric, but I never bought it because that would mean, you no, know, at the time I was thinking buy the fabric and then send it to somebody to have them make it, but I never bought the fabric. And so I saw it when I was on Etsy. Yeah. That's fun. Love that. So now the last piece of fabric that I got. You guys are going to clutch your pearls. You're going to talk amongst yourselves. You're going to do all the things because if you know me and you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, you have seen many, many times why this is my favorite fabric. And whatever this turns into, is just going to be known as the Bella bag. I mean, seriously, it's the Bella bag. That's my Bella butt all over the fabric. It's a little Bella butt all over this fabric. I just love it. I just love this. All those Bellas. So sweet. And she has given me every single one of these faces a million times over. <laughs> Isn't it the best? So this could potentially be one, two, three, four, five, six. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bags in the making. Yeah. Plus the peacocks is eight. Now, While I was on this pillow kick with Peacocks and Posies, I pulled out an oldie but goodie. This is a finish I finished in 2015 on a cruise ship. Um, and I haven't touched it since. It's been in the drawer ever since. So I decided I was going to make a pillow out of this. This is Fiber Fibery Friends. I don't know what it's called, but it's by Clouds Factory. And this was a finish from 2015, and it's the two little girls that are knitting and crocheting, and there's little sheep, and there's lambs, and there's all these little woolly creatures. There's a little something in a sweater. What is that? Is it a sheep in a sweater? I think so. There's rabbit. There's a rabbit. There's stockings. There's a scarf. And it's in cross stitch. And this piece, it's always bittersweet to me because there's something that I didn't do that I wish with all my heart I did do, but I don't. I don't have the heart to take out the stitching and redo it, but I might, I don't know. So at the time I was stitching this along with Jessie Marie and Candace, Candace, and we were all stitching it together. And I don't remember if it was Jessie, I think it was Candy. I think it was Candy that did it. Instead of stitching the alphabet, she stitched her name, and I think it was her YouTube name. Why didn't I do that? And every time I look at it, that's what I say. Why didn't I do that? 
why didn't, instead of the whole entire alphabet, why didn't I just stitch the crafty curator? I don't know. I don't know. And that's what I see every single time I look at it. And even when I pulled it back out, I just wanted to pull out all these stitches and just restitch the crafty curator. And I still may. Because every time I look at it, that's gonna what I'm gonna want to see. But it's gonna hurt my heart to have to stitch, unstitch all that, to frog all that. That's it's a lot of work. But anyway, I was going to make this in a pillow into a pillow using one of the pieces of the batik fabric. Not matchy matchy, but you know, right? And then I had an idea. I had my sassy pants on that day. And I said to myself, self, why don't you just make it into a project bag? Because I'm a project bag maker, right? Yeah. So why don't I just whip it up into a project bag? No problem. I can do it. Easy peasy. Here, here's, here's my thought process. There were very specific measurements that um, Suzette, Suzette or Suzanne, I'm sorry. Suzette, there were very specific measurements that Suzette gave for the front part of her bag in her video, right? So I'm thinking that I can just cut off strips of the fabric to surround this middle motif and make it equivalent to the size of that front. Because I think the front of her fabric is like eight inches deep by 14 inches wide, this is absolutely, it's not eight inches. I, I would say five and a half at best. Um, maybe six. So I can add to the front, to the top, the bottom, and the sides to make it the equivalent of the front of the, of the front panel of the project bag. That's what I'm thinking. And I bet everybody out there that sews is like, you can absolutely do that. But in my mind, I'm like, what are you thinking? And I think I can do that. Or I can just make this the front, the whole front. I don't know. Right? Why can't I make this the whole front? Is this 14 inches wide? We'll be back with that. We'll come back to that later. But that's that's my thought. I think I'm going to turn this into something that I will use every single day. Oh, a lot. Not every single day, but I'll use it a lot. Um, I like the idea of turning smalls into project bags. Like that was the idea with the elephant that was gifted to me um, last Christmas from Elena B and Olivia B. I had it turned into a project bag. Um... That was the plan for the peacock that was gifted to me by McKenna. Um, I was going to use that peacock fabric that I showed in the last video to have it sent to somebody to make into a project bag. So I'm going to give that a go. And we'll see where that where that takes us. I don't know. But I'm, I hope you didn't hear that. Um, but I think I can do that. I think... I think I can. I think I can. That's what the little engine that could said. Um, so the next time you see that, it will either be a work of beauty or it'll be a hot mess. And we'll just laugh at it and love it together. Um, okay, so that was my fabric. I did pick up a few patterns. Not many, but a few. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that happened. Um, so, <laughs> um, I picked up a few patterns. Um, these two patterns I found while I was on the hunt for the Jacobian bell pull. And I remember, <clears throat> I believe her name was Jessica. I don't know if she makes videos anymore. But I remember her holding up this pattern. 
and I wanted it, but I didn't know the name of it and I couldn't find it. Um, or I found it and I bought it and I forgot about it, but I don't think I did. But I remember looking for it. And that is this. This is Menorah Thai Dancer. And I just thought that was just lovely. And she was working on that and it looked even, obviously, even more beautiful in person. Well, not in person, but on video stitched. So I got that pattern. This, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. No clue. I just wanted to stitch it. Um, it reminded me of the Pokemon collage a little bit. I barely know what a Pokemon is, okay? But the pattern was free. That huge, epic Pokemon generations, those are free patterns. And I have, I think, all of them because I just love all the colors and I love the look of the collage. I'm still not really sure what in the world a Pokemon is, okay? And the only one I know is Pikachu, but I have all of those generations and cross stitch, but I digress. So when I saw this, it reminded me of that collage type style. And this is called the Eight Immortals. So can I hold this while I read it to you? The Eight Immortals or Pa Sign, I'm sorry, in Chinese, are a group of legendary beings based on historical characters in Taoism. These beings, at different periods and for various reasons, each attained immortality. Each one of the immortals represents a different condition in life, poverty, wealth, aristocracy, age, youth, masculinity, and femininity. femininity. Artistic representations of each are usually recognizable by identifying their respective attributes. Stories of the Eight Immortals were popularized in Chinese art, forms, folklore, drama, novels, woodblock prints, and porcelain. They are, and I apologize, I'm going to mess this up, but I don't know how to avoid it. Okay. Number one, Li Tai Guai, who always carries a crutch and a gourd. He is the emblem of the sick. So I'm assuming that's him. Zhang Li Quan, usually shown with a fan, he represents the military man. I don't see him. If you guys do, you can point them out to me. Lan Kai He, the strolling singer, either a woman or a young boy, shown with a flower basket, patron, patron deity of florists. Mm -hmm. He Zan Gu, a woman said to have lived in the late 7th century, shown with a lotus blossom or flower basket, and occasionally with a peach and sheng reed organ. Zhang Gu Lao, said to have lived in the 7th or early 8th century, shown as a rule with his mule and carrying a bamboo tube drum with iron sticks. He is the emblem, the emblem of old men. I see him, but I was looking for the mule. Oh, there he is. There's the mule. You see him right there? Okay. Lu Dong Bin, shown with a fly whisker, dressed as a scholar and honored as such. He is also he also had a magic sword with which he performed freak feats or with or which reason he is also the patron deity of barbers. I'm assuming that's this guy in the middle because he has a sword on his back right there. Han, Zing, Han Zhang Zi, 
Said to be the nephew of the Tang Dynasty statesman and scholar Han Yu, is often shown with a flute and patron deity of musicians. This young man here. And Kao Gu Ju, said to have been connected with the Sung imperial family and is generally known, shown with castanets or a jade tablet of admission to court, patron deity of actors. Well, that must be this guy here. And I just found the guy with the fan. There's his fan right there. So, I thought that was pretty fascinating. There's also a story behind the menorah tie dancer, if you're interested. Um, a popular form of drama since the late uh, Udaya period, menorah was a heavenly creature, half bird, half woman, who lived at the top of the mountain far away from the earth in the kingdom of Kinoms. Patumraj, I'm sorry, the king of Kinoms, Kinorans, had seven beautiful daughters. The youngest, Menora, got caught by a hunter when she came down to swim in a pond at the foot of the hills. She was then presented to Prince Sutton, who married her, but Menora's mother-in-law did not like her and plotted to get rid of her. One day, she sent Sutton off on an imaginary campaign. Back home, she ordered the execution of Menora, who, who, who however asked for her wings so that she could perform a last dance for her mother-in-law. But with the wings, she fled quickly back to her home at the top of the mountain. When Sutton came back, he followed her to the mountain kingdom, going through a lot of hardship, but he got there all the same. King Patumaraj set a hard test of his love by showing all the fingers of his seven daughters through holes, but Sutton could identify the right finger belonging to his wife. Prince Sutton had, had proved his love for Menora so they could live happily together forever. It's very sweet. I like that. So, we just had an unexpected story time. Um, last but not least, as far as chart purchases go. So I shared this story on Facebook. It was Thanksgiving morning and I was sitting on the couch and Troy comes up to me very randomly. And she asked me to finish off something on this afghan that i gave her when she was 10 years old and i told her you know about you know how special afghans were and how special quilts were and you know that that is something that she would want to keep and take care of for the rest of her life and you know take it with her when she goes off to school off to college and this was eight year, almost eight years ago when she was 10. and she came to me and she was like i need you to you know fix that edge on the Afghan because I'm going to be going off to college in a couple of months, a couple of months being August. Right. So it's okay. We got to get that, you know, finished. And I asked her if it was clean and we had, you know, she was like, no, I got to wash it. Blah, blah, blah. That doesn't matter. Right. So then she says, Oh, so randomly, she says, also, I want you to stitch me a sunflower. Um, and she was so specific. She said, I want a sunflower on a light background so I can put it up on my college or my, or my dorm wall and make a view. And that was, that was pretty much it. Um, so I immediately went looking around, um, on the internet for a pattern. I love sunflowers and I have, um, a few sunflower patterns but they're all full coverage. And I didn't want one that just typically looked like a sunflower. I wanted something that was a little different. So I was looking for just the right pattern, something that wouldn't look like weird on a college dorm room wall. Um, 
but still wanted to give her exactly what she asked for. Um, so I found it. I found it that day. Um, from the same place where I got all of the landmark tapestry patterns that um, Caroline enabled me to get many moons ago. Um, and I think they changed the name of their online shop. I know they did because it's the same owner. Um, but this is the pattern that I ordered. It's called the Long Sunflower. And I love the sunflower. I just love it. Like, it represents so much. It reminds me, it's, it's a very feminine sunflower to me. Is this focused? There you go. It's a very feminine sunflower. Um, I love that the bloom on top is just big and beautiful and the two blooms on the side are kind of in the background a little bit. It almost looks like, like that's me and her dad and that's her in the middle. Um, I love the femininity of it. And this is a full coverage pattern. This whole cream colored background in the pattern is stitched. We're not doing that. And there are also, if you can see, little dots, little blue dots. Those are also stitched with that blue background. We're not doing that either. Um, I'm trying to get this to focus. Those dots, I'm going to have them in the pattern, but they're going to be beads. And I completely changed the border. Um, and I've already started it because she asked me to make it for her and that's what we do. I will show you that in a minute. The last pattern I got along with that because charts don't travel alone is Autumn Lily. Because it's just beautiful. These are all the same pattern down here. They're just different colorways. Um which seems to be a thing with landmark tapestry charts. A lot of the patterns repeat themselves, but in different colorways. Um, also, I want to stitch all of these at the bottom here. All of them. If only they had a calla lily. Calla lilies are my favorite flower. They have a lily, the second one right here. That's a lily, but it's not a calla lily. I'm going to stitch all of them. So that's going to lead me directly into my whips because I just told you um, that I started that. But before I do that, remember this Peacock Cipher? This is, this is me asking for help right now. So I showed this I got from Stash and Load last week, um, right before I was kicked out of Stash and Load. Uh, <laughs> And somebody commented, I'm sorry I didn't jot down your name, and asked if they got the embellishment pack. There's no embellishment pack in here. So my assumption is that somebody already stitched this and they were getting rid of the pattern, which totally makes sense. But if anybody knows where to get or if they have the embellishment pack and they're not going to use it, um, or if they know where I can get just the embellishment, embellishment pack, this is called Peacock Cipher by Jess Nan. If you have the embellishment pack and you are willing to part with it, um, please get in touch with me and let me know how much you are looking for it because I'm trying to find just the embellishment pack. Um, don't necessarily want the pattern, but I've seen the embellishment pack and I want it. So get in touch with me if you know, if you have, please. Um, that being said, here is my Humble beginning on the long sunflower for Troy. So you can't really see much here, but the border I have completely changed from that blue um, to use this from Silks For You. It's a quarter hank or a half of a hank. Um, does that not scream sunflower? This isn't really as orangey red, fiery red as it, fiery orange as it's showing. It's gold. So it's like brown, olive, and gold. Um, let 
Yeah. It's not really showing up though. Oh, there you go. So doesn't it look like a sunflower? Yeah. So this is a quarter hank or half of a hank um, that I got from Silks for Use some time ago and I just had it on hand. So that's what I'm doing for that entire border instead of that blue. And then you probably can't see this very well, but I put some gold beads in that I had on hand. And that's also what I'm going to do for the blue dots that you saw in the pattern. I'm going to, um, oh, and I used Sulky Metallic right here. It's in a coppery rose gold kind of color just to give it a little bit of bling right there. Um, you can't really, you can kind of see it, but not really. But I think that the sunflower tones in the Silks for You Hank kind of tones everything down. It's not as sharp or not as um, distracting is the word I'm looking for, I think. Not as distracting as the blue might have been. I didn't, I didn't like that blue. And normally I love blues with yellows and oranges. I love that. But not for this. Um, I really like that Silks for You in there. So you can't really see this because tell you what, I'm going to insert, um, I recorded this earlier because I knew you wouldn't be able to see it. I'm going to insert a close up video of what I did with this, um, here. Hey guys, um, just wanted to give you a close up of the long sunflower um, by Landmark Tapestries. This is a close-up of the work that I have done thus far because it probably would not really show up on camera. Um, so here in the middle you have the variegated silks for you floss um, that I'm using as the border that I just thought was a perfect sunflower color. Um, I'll back up so you can see that with the greens and the browns and the golds. I just I just thought that was perfect. Um, also, as I discussed, I decided to use some beads in here. Um, so I have the little gold beads. These were probably left over from the Raven Queen um, or at the Met. I'm not sure, but I had them on hand. Um, and there is the one over one sulky metallic and like a coppery rose gold. And this will be um, used every so often. Like you can see that the bar pattern, how it starts, it's the the bar pattern with the beads and then you have the block of rose gold and that continues throughout the border. Um, so just to show you up close, this is the silky metallic rose gold that I'm using. And as you can see, it's pretty thin. Um, I'm not sure what this is, if it's a blending filament, I'm really not sure. Um, but over two on 28 count wasn't quite going to give the coverage that I was looking for. Um, so that's why I decided to do two over one. Um, and it wasn't bulky at all. It wasn't difficult to work with. Let's see how I can zoom in here. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Um, so this is the two over one with that um, silky metallic and it has a little bead in the middle. So just wanted to give you a close up on that. Um, I'm hoping this turns out the way that I envision it, but we'll see. And that's that because this is falling. <laughs> So hopefully that gave you a little bit of um, a better idea of how it's going to look. So I'm excited about that. Um, and obviously I want to have it um, finished in frame before she spreads her wings and flies away. Um, the fabric that I'm using is MCG Textiles 28 Count Even Weave that I had on hand. 
um, everything I'm using I had on hand. I didn't I didn't buy any extra floss or beads or anything. Um, I'm using what I had, and so far so good. It's amazing when you're used to stitching on 40 count or 25 count one over one, how huge 28 count looks. 28 count stitches look. Um, but the stitches are laying beautifully. Really nice. Also, I don't remember if I mentioned it when I recorded that other part. Um, I know I mentioned that this was the, the metallic was done two over one, but the black is done um, three over one. Excuse me, three over two. The black is done three over two um, because I, I have a lot of black now. I, I have a lot. Yeah, one more time. Um, I have a lot of black, <laughs> so that's done three over one. And that wasn't why I did it three over one because the coverage looked better and I wanted that black to stand out a little bit, give it a little dimension. So that's that. Um, the next whip I have to show you is my tribal cat. Um, Tribal Cat took a back seat. The original plan that I had was, this was my high tea start last month. The original plan was to stitch on this every Friday following um, that high tea until the next high tea to make sure it got some love. But Tribal Cat got booted to the side because I was focusing on a finish um, with peacocks and posies. And so now, because it's fairly small, um, smaller, than what I usually work on, should I say, and it's one thread, one color. This has now become my car project. So I work on it when I work on it, kind of. It stays in the car for the most part. So the last time you saw it, um, I think I had one of these things done and all of this over here done. So I finished this petal and this petal added these little circles and everything over here to my right um, has been added since you last saw it. And again, this is using the de Havilland embroidery, th embroidery thread in African Violet. And also this is the Wexford linen. Now let's see if this plays nice with the camera. This is done on 32 count Wexford linen in Tranquility by Silk Weavers. And it's not going to focus, is it? But you can see it really looks like an even weave. Maybe you can't see it. Think of a 32 count Lugana. That's what it looks like. Nothing about this says linen to me. But yet, it's called Wexford Linen. Okay. I kind of forgot where I was for a second. I was just staring at it. I forgot I'm actually filming and I need to focus on that. So the next whip I have is my Jacobian bell pull. Um, I have been working on this since the Peacocks and Posies finish. I'm making sure you can see this. Since the Peacocks and Posies finish on November 18th. So I'm going to give this a full two weeks um, and switch it out on Saturday, December 2nd. I was going to stitch on this through the month of December. But you know, I was watching some of Gerald's old Confessions of a Floss Tuber and he asked, a question of some floss tubers that he didn't um, necessarily that he didn't ask of me and I thought it was very interesting I'm gonna come back to that question in a second but I just want to point out some interesting things about this I absolutely love this air these areas that remind me so much of black work um, but they're not exactly black work are they um, 
because black work is usually making the design with one thread uh, while these are designs made with the cross stitching that makes it look kind of like a lattice here and in here I just love how that looks and that squirrel I'm he's disgustingly cute and of course I named him Geo after Gerald's squirrel friend um, because it was Gerald and I that are stitching this at the same time and I said when you stitch on something at the same time as Ginger Gerald Stitcher and there's a squirrel in it you name it Geo so that's my Jacob Jacobian bell pole it's very tiny this is only like three and a half inches it's about three and a half inches wide I'm doing it one over one on 25 count so it's going to be very narrow the original one is like four feet long um, on 14 count this is not going to be four feet long and I think it's like eight inches wide something like that I don't know but this is one over one on 25 I think Gerald is doing his one over two on 40 Oh, and this is my roll of frame. Very lightweight. I was about to tell you something. Um, yes, Gerald, when he was talking um, in some of his confessions of a floss tuber videos, he was asking people if they um, stitch on things for, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Um, but if they stitch on things to make their videos more robust with more projects, um, or if they tend to stitch on the same thing and if they think that's, or do they feel like they need to stitch on more things because they have people that are watching their videos and they don't want to bore them. And I thought that was such an interesting point. Um, because lately I have been doing a lot of monogamous stitching, um, Peacocks and posies. I don't know how long I've been working on that. Um, prior to that, I don't remember what I was working on, but I was working on something for uh, a, a fairly long time before that. I would work on things like months at a time. I think it was Dragons of Sumatra, like a month at a time. And I was getting ready to go down that same path with uh, the Jacobian Bell Pole, with just working on that through the rest of December. And I really thought about that, like, I wouldn't have much to show with only one pattern, you know, or nothing, not much to show with only, you know, this, if I started working on a bunch of different things with no progress. Um, and I just thought that was a very interesting point, which is why I, I said two weeks and then I'll bring out something new because I would like to be able to do these videos and feel like I have something more to show you. Um, because I do these videos for you guys as much as I do it for me. You know what I mean? And it's it's not like I'm changing anything about how I stitch. If I'm focusing on a finish, I'm going to focus on a finish. But um, like I've said in my past videos, I'm really concentrating on my whips going into the next year. So it would only make more sense to bring them out more often. Um, even if it's rotating the same three or four. I don't know. Um, so that being said... Um, I don't know how I'm going to fit things into the rotation now that I've started the sunflower. Um, that's something that I want to keep working on all the time because it's something that needs to get done, but I still want to have a rotation. So I don't know what I'm bringing out after I finish with this on Saturday. Um, I don't know yet. Amtrak is calling me. You guys remember Amtrak with the royal purple and the olive green and the, I think it was blue. I don't remember. I think it was variegated. Amtrak is calling me, so it might be Amtrak. Um, but the final whip that I have to show you is one that I've been working on um, for going on two years now. Um, I don't know if he is still watching my videos but Joe, Joe, you, if you're watching this, I need you to turn it off. Not now, but right now. Okay? I need you to turn it off. Talk amongst yourselves 
Well, Joe turns off the video. If you want to know what you missed, just ask me, but I need you to turn it off. Okay, so hopefully by now, husband has turned off the video. I don't even know if he still watches. He might. He might watch on the sly. Who knows? But seriously, it needs to be off right now. So this is what I have been working on for him since January 2016, January 30th, 2016. This is Desiderata by Indigo Rose. And that's where I am with that. Um, because I decided I will insert a picture here so you can see what it looks like. But because I decided to use whips for high tea to celebrate high tea, I decided to celebrate my whips instead of new starts because I'm focusing on whips in 2019. I decided to bring this out for November's high tea. So I brought this back out on Sunday. And I will continue to work on this every Friday during the Friday night stitching for the next five weeks um, until the next high tea. So that being said, I'm over halfway done with this. Like I might be, that might sound like a lot, but it's like n not way over halfway done, but I'm past the halfway part, halfway point. So I don't know. We might we might make some progress over the next five weeks because this stitches up rather quickly. Um, at least the words do. Like I started this on Sunday. I picked this back up on Sunday, and when I posted my progress, um, people really thought I got a lot done, and I did. Um, I did, but it, it was because the majority of it was words, and those words. Oh, I buy. But when I get into the part where it's specialty stitches, um, it's a little bit different. That's that's really, in all honesty, where most of the time is spent is doing the specialty stitches because they're very intricate. They're very detailed. Um, and because this pattern is such a delicate pattern, you don't want to rush through them. You want to take your time and make those small, short stitches, you know, um, to make it as detailed as possible. So that's what I was doing um, on Sunday. So this section right here, let me show you. This section right here is pretty much what I worked on. Um, I finished Be Cynical. Wait a minute, I can't read, it's backwards. I think I stitched Be Cynical in this whole entire last line. Everything else was already stitched. Or maybe I did that whole second line too. I don't know, but it was whatever. I did like a line and a half of words. And then I did all the satin stitched hearts. They took no time at all. But this little part right here, whoa, that, those little itty bitty back stitches and the eyelets in the center, that's what was time consuming. And I'm still not done. I got to go all the way to the end. So I will pick this back up on Friday. But what I can tell you is I was instantly reminded about how much I love this piece. I'm trying not to. Let it roll away. Um, and of course, I wanted to work on it constantly, but I kind of stuck to my. going before I move forward so now that I started that 
Um, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to build that into my rotation. Maybe it's something I work on every Sunday or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Um, but that's pretty much all the whips haul. This, this is going to be a long one because this was 54 minutes and I have stuff to add in here. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, but now we have one final thing that I need to show you. It's a finish that's not a finish. This is a segment that I'm going to introduce hopefully for the last time. And this is called How Not to Make a Pillow with Letitia. Hey guys, um, welcome to How Not to Make a Pillow with Letitia. Again, no peacocks or posies were harmed in the making of this video. Um, I've learned several things over the course of the past week. Um, if you can sew a straight line, that does not mean you can make a pillow without proper preparation. That's lesson number one. So my Peacock Symposies pillow. Um, most people would have had the pillow finished by now. I am not most people. Um, so I'm going to share <laughs> what I've learned um, to help those of you novice stitchers that are out there with, you know, an idea to make a pillow as well. Do not be dismayed by my humor. It can be done. It can easily be done. But there's some prep work you need to do. So the first thing I did was iron um, both of my pieces, the backing as well as the front when I ironed on the fusible interfacing. That was fine. Lined it all up um, with the right sides facing each other. That was fine. You definitely want to use pins. Um, one thing that I noticed when I was sewing the ends of the pillow, the edges rather, is that the fabric does shift. And I thought simply because it was smaller, and it's not quite as small as I thought it would be, by the way. Um, but I thought because it was a smaller, it was smaller, I could just navigate the fabric easily. No, the the fabric does shift if you don't pin it into place, which is why people that are, that know what they're doing advise you to pin it into place. They tell you that for a reason. Um, also, when you're sewing the edges of the fabric and the, the edges of your project and the backing of the fabric, and you're feeling sassy, and you feel like the situation's under control, do not forget you have to stuff the pillow. Do not forget that because I was literally like six inches away from sewing this whole thing shut. Totally forgot I had to actually stuff the darn thing. Um, so I have a six inch opening, about six, seven inches opening, which is fine, but I, I literally forgot as I was zooming along in the sewing machine because I was feeling confident and well. Um, so I immediately stopped and reverse stitched and stitched again that last open that right before where I wanted to stop rather or where I ended up stopping and I turned it inside out I used the round end not the pointy end but the other end of a chopstick a wooden chopstick to kind of poke my corners out feeling good feeling confident feeling great turn it inside out it looks like I did something right um, I press the inside of my seams so I can have the neat invisible stitch closure. I did watch that on YouTube. And then it happened. Perhaps the most important lesson of all. Guys, you want to make sure you have enough polyfill. Okay? So, <laughs> my poor pillow. It's not stuffed at all. It's not stuffed all the way. 
because I ran, I ran out of polyfill. I bought a 10 ounce bag. I thought it would shift and stuff, but this is a pretty nice size pillow. But anyway, here it is. My Peacock Symposies pillow. I'm so excited. All humor aside, guys, I made a thing. I made a pillow. Look at it. And there's the backing. I'm going to show it again when it's properly stuffed. I mean, I tried to like rearrange a look at my opening. I was so close to sewing that sucker up. How in the world was I going to get that filling in there? I don't know. So I've tried to shift the polyfill around because once it comes out of the, the bag, and this was what I used. It was the 10 ounce crafter's choice. Fairfield polyester polyfill, 10 ounces. Um, I don't think I'm going to need an entire, a whole other bag, like an entire other bag. Maybe I will. I don't know. But I don't think so. But I definitely need more than this um, because the fabric is too, it's too loose. But here's my pillow in all its glory. Um, it'll be tighter, obviously, once I get more polyfill, whenever that is, maybe tomorrow. But I'm so proud of this. Um, there's my beads. Um, let me turn this way. Oh, that's better. That's better. Here are my beads, my little signature, my LB 2018. Funniest thing in the world, this cue. So two people reached out to me that had stitchers, stitchers eye, I call it, when I showed my finish um, to every group I could think of. And on Instagram, I emailed Michelle and Barack, let them know I finished, sent them a pic. You know, it was a whole thing. And two people, Melissa and Candace, reached out to me to say, hey, is that Q finished? And I was like, yeah, there's just so many mistakes throughout this project. It's finished. It's just wonky. Um, and then I looked at it again and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't finish the road stitches or whatever these are called. I think they're road stitches. I didn't finish like three of them right here. It was just big old crosses, big old X's. I didn't finish the rest of the specialty stitches. So thank you ladies for your keen stitcher's eye and finding that. But it's so funny because of all the mistakes that are in this pillow that are in this now, I have stitches going through the interfacing as well because I forgot the bottom stitches on my queue. Um, so I wanted to show this to you I'm really chuffed about this. I am. Um, <sighs> I made a pillow. Um, and I love the backing, but I'll show it again once it's fully packed. I'm not going to post it until it's finished, finished. And I get the, that, that sewn up because that's, that's a mess, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I made a pillow. So there's my peacock symposies. I'm in love with it. Now I see what the whole hubbub is about finished products. Um, well, almost finished, but how cool is that? And that that quarter of the batik fabric is absolutely perfect. Perfect. Really excited about that. So speaking of how not to make a pillow, the next segment um, on my next video will probably be how not to make a project bag, right? Uh, <laughs> because we're going down that road. Um, I think in the previous segment, I showed all of um, the fabrics that I re recently purchased. Um, so yeah, look forward to that next segment called how not to make a project bag with Letitia. Because I'm almost positive that there will be... It'll be action-packed adventure. Um, 
but in the end I'm also positive I will love it just as much so I did a nice sewing job I think my seams are crooked it's fine I don't care my seams are crooked but they look good right you see that little straight 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 boom straight 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 <laughs> that's all over this piece I don't care um I'm pretty darn proud of this like it looks like a pillow like it should you know and I know I'm, I'm geeking out over this but you guys know you get it I don't have to explain that to you um so yeah but there's my pillow or part of it and when I get the next bag of polyfill um you will see this packed a little more robustly and that'll be that and then I'll sew it up on top of the invisible seam I think I'll link that video below it was only like two minutes but it showed us how to do an invisible seam specifically on the pillow which is where I got the handy handy dandy idea to iron the edges that I'm going to sew together so that's cool but I'll link that below too it's like two minutes and it was helpful helpful to me anyway but I'm very excited about this um so yeah the next time you see it it will be finito see you next time bye all right well that was how not to make a pillow um so the next time you see that it will be fully finished um that was that was all said in great fun uh, i'm very proud of it i'm very proud of it but i have to laugh at the things that are funny because um, you know we learn we learn but um yeah i'm very excited about that being finished and once i get some more polyfill it will be but that was it for this video i thank you all for watching i ask i thank you all for staying with me um, for those of you that are still here, um, along with finishes, come stash that you're no longer going to do anything with. So I would like to pass the stash. I would like to pass the stash for Peacocks and Posies with, from Rosewood Manor. Um, the pattern is in excellent condition. I have not written in it or on it. I worked solely making sure I'm not lying here. Um, yeah, I never read, never wrote anything on it. Um, I worked solely off of working copies. So I would like to pass the stash and send this off to somebody. Um, I will send it anywhere. And along with that, I am also going to include one of the skeins of the de Havilland embroidery thread in African violet, um, that I showed in my last video. That is what I'm using to stitch this. So I will give away the Peacock Symposies pattern, as well as one skein of the de Havilland embroidery floss in African Violet. Now, like I said, this is 200 meters of floss which is about 218 yards using one skein. I'm gonna look right now to see if one skein will actually do this whole entire pattern. So this large sampler uses 12 skeins and smaller pieces use one to two skeins each shown on cover. Shown on cover. Okay, so this sampler uses 12 skeins of, I believe, DMC. I think that's what she used and I'm trying to see what the model was stitched on 32 count so 12 times 8 is what ooh, I'm about to do math on online live on camera so 12 times 8 is 96 right 
and you have 96, so that would be times 3, because you're going to use two strands. 96 times 3 is 288. Two hundred eighty-eight. So this is two hundred and eighteen yards. So you could use this and then maybe add some accent colors. Maybe do, I don't know, maybe throw in a couple of purple peacocks and a couple of green peacocks. I don't know, but have fun figuring it out, you know? play with it a little bit. Don't be afraid of using color. Um, but I will give this away um, to um, I'm so scattered. Let's go through the drill. You know the drill. You have to be a subscriber. Um, you have to be 18 years or older um, or have your parents permission. I actually prefer you be 18 years or older, period. Um, also, do not use the word giveaway in your comments, um, and if you do, I'll have to delete it because that invites trolls and such. So, I would like you in your comments, if you are interested in this giveaway, um, to tell me your favorite bird and your favorite flower. might be coming your way and today is I forgot the date already but I know it takes a couple of weeks to sometimes catch up and watch all the videos so um you know what Kyle said today in a video um that I watched that his birthday is December 10th I'll do the drawing on December 10th how about that be really cool if Kyle actually won, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, there you go. I will write that down before I forget. I will do a random drawing on um, December 10th for those that just tell me in a simple sentence their favorite bird and their favorite flower. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking with me on another meaty and juicy Crafty Curator video. Um, I will see you guys next time and be kind to one another. Take care.